I haven't changed yet. My name is David Sun, and um, right now I am a master's student at NYU. I will be graduating this May. Um, and so I'm here today because I uh, am wanting to present on uh, learning styles. And specifically when I was asked to do a presentation, um, it was really to, to kind of inquire as to like how this would affect the art position. Um, so, just kind of um, getting into getting into it. Um, I really I chose this presentation because it, this is like what most of us like have to do in terms of um, our lives, right? So, while I myself am not like this organized in any way, shape, or form, um, I will say that I, I do have like a lot of things open up at one uh, time. And um, for our students today, they really are quite bombarded with a lot of different um, responsibilities. They have a lot of stimuli that are kind of thrown at them. And so it's really important to kind of take into consideration um, something as small as their learning styles because it really affects their experiences as individuals. Um, so, let me see. Okay, so I want to start off by asking, how do you all learn? Um. <laughs> Well, I'm a technical learner, and so, um, and we talked about this through email, because yeah. this, this is my doctorate work. Um, but I am very much need to have to, like something in my hands to be able to physically engage with it. Mm -hmm. I have multiple um, styles, visual, uh, technical, um, and I actually have to do things myself, too, in order for me to retain it sometimes. So it just depends on what I am learning, for the most part. I'm an auditory learner, so I just have to not skip class ever. <laughs> and then I don't have to study or any, read any books. Wow. Yeah, I never bought the books in grad school. I can wow. do that too. You know what? I don't either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, I, I, I had some of them. I had to make a I had to make a list, even though I don't like lists, but I, I yeah. colored them, and so I played with my colored oh. pencils more than anything. That's fine. I just no, I definitely can just show up to tests as long as I don't miss a class. When I miss a class, I'm done. See, I'm, I'm really jealous of you then. <laughs> yeah, I know it's gonna not work for me at one point, but it has yet to fail. So I have no real world <laughs> consequences thus far. Uh oh. But yeah, thank you. So um, all three of you, you touched upon like the three different types of learning styles that a majority of people work with. And Rodney actually brought up a really good point, the fact that um, while there are these three really different styles, uh, a lot of people can be a mix of that, right? And so some people can be um, two equally, they can have all three, some people can be more of one than another. Uh, but really it's um, when you're able to kind of consider and incorporate all of these different learning styles that you can really affect and, and kind of get at the heart of information to, to disseminate that appropriately to our students. So, um, I hope you like videos. Uh, I'm going to, this is a video, I'm, I'm going to admit it's a bit cheesy, but I think it, it does a good job of getting the point across, so. That's fine. So you take the 
and uh, help multiply to the coefficient m minus one from the exponent, and do the same thing here. Okay. That makes sense. So who wants to solve this problem? students that we work with incorporate um, into, into their ability to kind of absorb knowledge and, and find out what, um, what type of, of new different things that they can work with in terms of uh, utilizing that for their own education. Um, okay, so, so just to review, we're going we're gonna to go over them a little bit. Uh, um, what we have first up are the tactile learners. So, um, these are the students that really learn by moving, doing, and touching things, right? And so, like Lulu, you mentioned earlier, and Rodney as well, saying that sometimes you actually just need to kind of physically um, have something in front of you or something that you can kind of participate in, whether it's an activity or um, it, it's something that allows you to kind of basically experience the information in, in a way that allows you to <clears throat> firsthand kind of gain the ability of um, seeing what what the information is by interacting with it. Um, so, our tactile learners really excel by having this hands-on approach, right? And they love to interact with the environment. Um, and because of that, they really associate movement into a transformative experience. And really, when you have tactile learners, it's important to realize the fact that you can't just sit there and lecture at them. You can't just um, you know, show them a picture and hope that they'll get it. You have to give them this chance, this ability to kind of get up, to kind of you know, write, the, write the problem on the board. As we saw in the video, the student actually was able to draw out the, the examples. Um, I do apologize for using math. I was always terrible at it. Um, <laughs> so I had the, the video in front of me. I, was, I still couldn't really follow it. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> But when we're trying to engage with tactile learners, there's a lot of different strategies that you can use to kind of incorporate how they might absorb the information. So sometimes using things like flashcards, diagrams, flowcharts, where they can actively engage in the information, they can kind of follow along, they themselves can add to it, they can take away from it. These are all really unique strategies that kind of help with um, engaging them on, on their level. So um, what are some other strategies that you've used in the past for tactile learners that you've encountered? I think like they they do it a lot with um, like with kids, mm -hmm. so like building like dioramas of a historical scene or yeah. whatever really helps that student um, to learn about the history or you know dressing up or something cute like that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, all mine have been using those type of examples. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, I think it's a the diagram or making like, taking something. And making it real, mm -hmm. so I made my own CD CD player. Like in mm -hmm. like science fairs were awesome because I love being able to take things and I would just tinker with things and make them. Mm -hmm. So if it could come alive, that's great. And you know, here in our residence halls, we we do that in multiple ways, shapes, and forms, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, I've worked with artists who are able to make interactive bulletin boards so that mm -hmm. the residents can um, kind of play with them, that they can kind of have a more hands-on approach. Um, so. There's always, uh, you know, different